Anthony Duvid here. We are live with my weekly Books That Changed My Life series. So three weeks now. It's the third week, first installment. I did a historical overview of three weeks now. books that had a major the third week, first installment. impact on my life. Uh, last week, I did my ISKCON uh, Hindu library. I apologize. I haven't got to uh, time stamping it yet, but uh, hopefully do that. Um, you know, Oswald had asked that I do my World War II Holocaust books, God forbid, uh, but uh, I figured I would do my civil engineering and architecture urban planning books because they're a huge impact on my life. Not necessarily sure any of these are like really great books that like shatteringly changed my life, but it's my professional field of studies. Um, I've worked in many different fields. I've day traded and uh, um, various levels of employment, but now I do property management. Um, you know, went to University of Michigan uh, uh, School of Engineering for Civil Engineering. Um, it's closest to, you know, God forbid, I'm just, uh, you know, now we're in eBay business. It didn't really work out like I wanted, but I studied for years. I read tons of books on the subject. I you know, went to conventions. I sought employment. I uh, uh, you know made resumes. Went to job fairs. And unfortunately, I didn't get employment at any major firms, and ended up doing small level property management and run an eBay business. Um, however, it was my academic field of study, and certainly probably the field that I put the most uh, effort into academically. So. Uh, Put uh, some a little more light on. One second. Sorry about that. So I'm actually going to sit on the floor for this. So it's going to be a little complicated, and uh, you know, trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. So I have my uh, Logitech uh, camera. Thanks to uh, Luke Ford. Appreciate that. So. Uh, I'm going to add this camera, and I'm going to use the microphone from my uh, Apple. I'm, I'm actually going to sit on the floor so I could uh, get a good view of these books. So sorry about that. Let me see if... Uh, I could get this to work. So I'm going to start at the bottom to so make sure the sound is good. So I'm going to start. Okay. So this is the bottom shelf. Some of these books are actual textbooks, but mostly they're just big. And, you know, so a lot of you know, books, they're, you know, they're, they're big. Um, Here's a course pack from a uh, course, University of Michigan, Civil Engineering 631 Construction Decisions Under Uncertainty. Uh, Professor Ayanoa about uh, game theory. It's actually a little complicated uh, mathematics. I didn't actually end up finishing that course. I took the uh, beginning. Some of these are designed as university textbooks. Um, some of them are overviews of, uh, here I actually have a duplicate of this book. I might actually sell one of these. So some of these are just overviews. Here's an interesting book, Building Cities Towards Civil Society and Sustainable Environment. And uh, covers the basics of what it means to have a city. What you know? What uh, makes up a city? What uh, uh, your projects, technical issues, private buildings, public buildings, sacred buildings, blocks and streets, public spaces, quarters and neighborhoods. Um, this is a pretty good book. I don't know why I have two of them, so I'm actually going to put up for sale another one of them. Here's a great book, um, The Architect's Home. Um, this is a Tishken book. A lot of these books are Tishken. It has really good pictures and just an overview of 
um, housing forms. And uh, these are actually houses built by famous uh, architects. Here, Albert Kahn Associates, continuing the legacy. Hey, John, nice to see you. Um, so Albert Kahn, obviously famous architect, Henry Ford's architect, and his firm, which even in his lifetime had hundreds of architects, is still around in one of the larger architectural firms in Metro Detroit, uh, you know, the book has pictures of some of the projects that uh, they're still doing. So this would be a university textbook uh, that, you know, civil engineering um, textbook funding fundamentals of building construction. Um, and so this is actually a university textbook for civil engineering you know, that, uh, you know, deals with uh, what it takes to put up buildings, um, foundation, wood, uh, timber frame construction, uh, light wood construction, exterior finishes, brick, stone, steel frame, concrete, um, you know, finishing, roofing, glass, windows, doors, um, all the various aspects to building construction. Here's another one, also a straight university civil engineering textbook, heating, cooling, and lighting, sustainable design methods for architects, a more modern one that uh, you know, tries for energy efficiency, dealing with air conditioning, ventilate, ventilation. So I went to the show a few weeks ago heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. So you see heating, cooling, and lighting from uh, the architectural decisions, um, the building decisions, to uh, light, uh, you know, understanding the climate, the part of the globe you are, to, uh, you know, things like passive heating, passive cooling, uh, the type lighting system, um, And including the, uh, a little bit about the actual uh, air conditioning, uh, HVAC systems. Here's another technical uh, university book, uh, the RS Means, Cost Planning, Estimating for Faculties Maintenance. Let me see another uh, technical book about how to cost estimate. So this is actually my field of cost ed estimating and scheduling and understanding the planning process, uh, maintenance, uh, benchmarking, um, and making uh, cost estimates and, uh, you know, the upkeep and maintenance of a building and the construction of a building. So, you know, some of these are, these you are on the bottom shelf because they're large and heavy. Some of them are actually uh, college textbooks, but uh, most of them are, you know, just the, uh, Picture books. This one's pretty interesting. Um, you know, there's Albert Kahn, uh, more well known is Lewis Kahn. And, you know, so Lewis Kahn is um, an internationally recognized uh, architect, Rizzoli, <laughs> uh, the book architecture firm in New York, uh, maybe in relation to Jim Rizzoli. And uh, you know, so uh, biography, history, building analysis of famous buildings that were built by Lewis Kahn. This is a pretty good book. Also, you can get the you know like a cheap book, Engineers from the Great Pyramids to uh, the Frontiers of Space Travel, just a history of great buildings and construction from the earliest times till today. Um, I like these type books. Uh, this is an important book, um, Fidon. So I have a whole bunch of Fidon books, but, you know, the American House. And I have a few books like this. We'll see as I go through. I have multiple books like this. And, you know, covers um, the type of building in America historically from uh, pre-European uh, settlement to uh, um, the type buildings across America it has kind of a timeline with each year, various things. This uh, this book's probably better than 
um, American architecture. Um, this is almost more like a, a textbook, and uh, it was more thorough with uh, historical colonial architecture, American architecture, architecture building types, uh, you know, rural, industrial, transportation, retail, and hotels, uh, city planning, landscape, um, good stuff. You, you know, uh, kind of technical. Here's also a good one. Um, this one's probably really one of the better books here of the American city, what works, what doesn't. And this is more urban planning than uh, your construction, talking about uh, um, your parks, playgrounds, retail. Uh, the life and death of a city retrofitting and has analysis of multiple modern urban places and uh, you know certain things that worked and haven't worked. Here is another university style textbook, land development handbook, planning, engineering, and surveying for a development, uh, land development, every process from the beginning through construction of picking out the land, environment or environmental policy, feasibility, site analysis to uh, you know, this uh, property law, real estate uh, law, um, zoning, planning, uh, to the actual building excavation, uh, surveying, uh, final design, and you know, be, be street if you're building a whole development that, that would include uh, your know, leveling, water, uh, water runoff, uh, sewage, uh, street design, um, wastewater collection, stormwater, grading, and earthwork, um, all important thing for land development. So not much actually about the building, but the, the land near the building. So very important stuff. This is you know, kind of the heart of civil engineering. Here's another university textbook, building constructions, principles, materials, and systems. Straight, like how do you put up buildings? Um, and you know you can see the um, load, thermal properties, air leakage, acoustics, um, you know, materials, wood, concrete, steel, masonry, soil, foundation, windows, roofing, stairs, all the various aspects for building. So the you know straight university textbook, the type stuff you you really have to know to uh, put up buildings. This is a pretty cool book, Houses of Worship, uh, an identification guide to the history and styles of American religious architecture. And this has some synagogues, mostly churches. So it's historical overview, a lot of pictures of mostly churches, but uh, you know, including some synagogues and others in America and the type styles around the, around, uh, the country and how that's changed over time. Um, this is a really cool book also, Hindu Temples in North America, a Celebration of Life, and uh, also has Buddhist uh, Jain Sikh temples, some of the early ISKCON temples, uh, has, you know, the story of the congregation and uh, the construction, and, uh, you know, pretty cool that, uh, you know, collection of uh, the history of Hindus in America uh, and the actual construction of Hindu temples. So this is a pretty cool book. Um, this is a, just a collection, 100 architects, 10 critics. So just a collection of famous architects, uh, mostly pictures. So I, you know, I have quite a few of these big picture books. Um, that's also Phaedon. Phaedon is the publisher, is the most popular builder, uh, most popular publisher of uh those type books. So uh, build, hopefully the sound here, still good. Um, Paul, estimated value for the entire Hindu book collection. Um, you, you, some of those books are hard to find, but you may prob probably not much. You may like, probably, you may be $1,500, $2,000. You know, like if you had to dump it, 
um, you maybe a thousand dollars if you sold them separately or, or try to get the higher prices, maybe as much as three thousand um, dollars. You know, some of those books I pay twenty, thirty dollars for. A few of them are rare, out of print, and might be worth uh, you know tens of dollars. But a lot of them are you know aren't worth anything. You know, you know dollar each. Um, these books also, um, you know, some of these books might be worth tens of dollars. Uh, you know, like the Albert Kahn, maybe the Hindu temples, those still might be worth tens of dollars if they're hard to find, um, you know, out of print. So moving up, let's, uh, did I get the, okay, so this, these are interesting. I have the whole collection. These are building type basics. So they cover architectural styles, the print, and examples of the layout for typical buildings. So if you notice here, I have um, houses of worship. Places of worship, healthcare facilities, retail and mixed use, housing, and museums. So this is a pretty good series. The building types basics, and uh, you know shows you the the floor plans and the basic build and examples of uh, you know these type buildings across uh, from a you know architectural engineering uh, perspective. This is a really good book if uh, you know you're into. Uh, um, the Definitive Guide to Identifying and Understanding America's Domestic Architecture. So it has historical analysis, the different types of buildings across America, when they were built. Um, you know, so you have uh, folk houses, colonial, romantic, uh, Victorian, English, Anglo, French, Mediterranean, Spanish, Modern, early modern bankers, mainstream style houses, various things. So it's almost encyclopedic of the type things you'll see across America. These are pretty cool. Um, the these were out of the Michigan Landscape uh, Organization and for certification for uh, green industry on uh, landscaping. I have a few more of these. I never took uh, took the training. I still have a few more of these books somewhere else that I haven't uh, um, read. So I got a whole bunch of the. I, I bought like basically all the Tishken books. So you know these are all really cool. Here's Moorish architecture, your know, history of uh, Northern Africa, and uh, your know, certain Islamic uh, Spanish uh, architecture. Here's another book on American religious architecture um this is also a pretty cool book more urban planning the american college town explaining um the specific style of college towns like ann arbor michigan where the main thing in the town is the university and uh you know, the the very specific building style that is related to university towns. Um, here's a cool book also, uh, Building in the North, um, specifically related to things like permafrost and uh, cold weather or places where you have the ground freezes in the winter. So you look here in Michigan or, you know, or even colder places, where you have to, uh, you know, recognize that it's going to freeze in the winter. Um, anyone who knows, you know, Detroit, Yamasaki, uh, famous uh, architect, uh, I believe is the architect of the World Trade Center. So, you know, God forbid that we're taken down, but the... Uh, um, built the Temple Bethel where I had my bar mitzvah and other buildings and houses 
uh, across Detroit. And then, you know, what was most famous probably for the World Trade Centers that were, uh, you know, taken down. He built the North Shore Congregation where my mother uh, went as a child in Glencoe, Chicago area suburbs. Uh, part of the reason why my mother chose Temple Bethel when I was a kid was because Yamasaki had uh, been the architect uh, of her synagogue and, uh, you know, Japanese man, but, uh, ar you know, famous architect that was uh, brought in, designed a few synagogues and other stuff. Here's an interesting book, Detroit, Then and Now, cool pictures of, uh, you know, Detroit decades ago and, you know, some of the buildings that are still there or how neighborhoods have changed. Um, this man's a professor at University of Michigan, um, wrote a book, Commonplace Towards Neighborhood and Regional Design. I think he's from Europe, but he's a professor at University of Michigan, urban planning, uh, Douglas Kelball. It's a pretty, um, pretty well-known book. Uh, I think he's called like New Urbanism, um, you know, like uh, uh, the style of things in, uh, you know, maybe we call gentrification or walkability, things that became popular um, in the last uh, decades. So maybe people, D Douglas Kelbaugh, he has another book, uh, um, Commonplace Revisited. So Commonplace and Commonplaces uh, re Revisited, where he's talking about repairing the American metropolis and uh, you know, the vision for the modern city and then what could be done for um, helping out uh, you know, the, the bad things that are happening in modern Euro uh, urban areas. Um, this is also an important book, Trascape, Wasting, Wasting Land in Urban America. And a lot of the urban planners are down on suburbia and the building, the way, uh, you know, kind of the wasteful way of single family housing and suburban areas and, uh, you know, the decline of suburban areas. And, uh, you know, so this is a, a deep analysis of it. Um, you'll see more books on this as I go through, uh, more my shelf. Um, thinking practice, reflections on architectural research and building work. Um, which I, I guess is looking at the role of academic research in uh, urban planning and architecture. I'm having a hard time remembering. Like I, I, all these books I've read, but uh, that one's drawing a blank. Another book, Holding Places. Matching sacred space with mission and message. Um, you know, I wanted to get into um, building synagogues and churches. Never happened, but uh, you know, these are pretty cool books. I'll show a few of them. And just talking, what's the goal and mission of the place, and how to match that uh, architecturally and build style. Um, so if you're you have an expanding congregation, here's another similar book: planning and building church facilities that uh, you know, just deals with uh, matching your congregational needs with an architectural plan. Here's another pretty cool one, the Hindu temple uh, introduction to its meaning in forms and uh, your analysis, uh, mostly in India of how Hindu temples are built and how the uh, building matches the needs. Here's a cool book, architecture in Michigan, uh, Wayne Andrews, uh, your know, history of, architecture in Michigan from some of the earlier buildings till today. Um, good book, Introduction to Architectural Technology, Structure and Form, Physics. Um, so your more form and uh, architectural theory covering a lot of topics, uh, pictures, basic uh, definitions, good stuff. Yeah, I haven't really looked at these books for years. Um, I have quite a few books. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, Unity Temple. I think this was possibly one of the very first things that he built. Frank Lloyd Wright, I believe, was a Universalist Unitarian and in Chicago. And one of the first buildings he built was this Unity Temple in Chicago. It has a lot of the history of Frank Lloyd Wright and uh, the project in uh, the development of his style. Um, this is also an important book, uh, Blueprint for Green Affordable Housing. 
you know, a lot of importance for uh, modern environmental concerns and uh, you know things like energy efficiency, um, community development, an important topic. You relate to urban planning and uh, your communities having uh, your communities and one of the problems with America. God forbid today the breakdown of the American community. Um, so you know community development theory. Uh, another book, Introduction to Indian Architecture, pretty cool book. Uh, uh, Hindu architecture is actually very cool. I have more books uh, that I haven't read in a different shelf, but uh, this, I think, is a pretty well-known um, urban planning, integral city, more uh, urban development theory on what makes for a well-working city, a well-functioning, coherent uh, city. This was a University of Michigan textbook, Land Use Planning and Development Regulation Law. Very important stuff. Um, you know, just basic stuff on uh, land law, zoning law, um, how to navigate the legal system in terms of uh, zoning and uh, legalities. Okay, so get up off the floor. Okay, yeah, I thought that was probably the only way, probably the only way to do that was to sit on the floor for those first two shelves. Show there, here's another cool book, another Frank Lloyd Wright, The Falling Waterhouse, big picture book. These ones are more expensive. So now I'm on the third shelf here uh, cool book a lot of pictures um, world cities yesterday and today um, just a history of all the major cities across America I mean across the world and like when they were developed and how they changed over time down a shelf. Let's see if I could. <laughs> Sorry about that. Trying to figure a better way at how to uh, set my camera. Maybe uh, this will work. So hopefully this will work. So I think this is a semi famous um, book How Buildings Learn what happens after they built, uh, which is, you know, property management, buildings change over time, and, uh, you know, certain things where you learn about your building as they're built. Uh, you know, Paul, I'm not interested in selling. Uh, I have some of my books for sale, uh, mostly duplicates or fiction or other one, but not, I don't plan on selling my Hindu books. Like, God willing, I will pass them on to my kids one day. Um, so Barney's Architect, God bless. So this is a cool book. Anyone knows architecture, you know, knows the famous uh, French architecture, the, 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 Corby, the Corbusier. And, uh, you know, so here's his, you know, fade on book, but that means it has nice pictures. And, uh, you know, he kind of changed architecture uh, almost 100 years ago. And so this is his ideas and forms. And you see, I actually have multiple books of uh, Le uh, Corbusier, and uh, I think I even have his own book himself. This is a really good book, like uh, um, an RS Means book, How Your House Works, and has these nice pictures and explains the basic physics of household appliances, uh, supply system, weight system, venting systems, has really good graphics. Um, I'd almost recommend this book. They might have a newer version of this. How Your House Works, Charlie Wing, R.S. Means. I read this book like five times. You're very uh, cool stuff, and uh, you're just awesome graphics that will uh, you'll show you how your 
household systems and appliances work. This is a cool book. Um, sorry, my phone's ringing. Yeah, so just send me an email. Okay. Sorry about that. My my mom called. So apologies. Thanks for sticking around. So, you know, this is a very interesting character, uh, Robert Moses and the Modern City, the Transformation uh, of New York. And Robert Moses was the head, I think, of the Parks and Recreation Department, and he transformed New York. He uh, moved around a lot of people. He did, like, public swimming pools. He built huge amounts of public swimming pools. He... Uh, um, you know, part of segregation, like African Americans might have a lot of complaints about him. Um, he got rid of public housing in some areas. He built public housing in other areas. Um, but the layout of New York today is most probably affected by Robert Moses, who I believe was in charge of the Park and Recreation Department. But uh, he had the most influence on the overall building. I think I have another book on, on Robert uh, Moses. So you know, a lot of, you might hear people talk about him, very influential, especially in New York, uh, you know, Jewish man also, and controversial in many ways. This is a pretty cool book also, Spiritual Space, the Religious Architecture of Petro Belushi, who I, I guess is a, a famous uh, church designer and built uh, churches across America. So, uh, you know, cool stuff, you know, thinking about form determining function and uh, what role does the church play in congregation, uh, you know, modern as opposed to like the Gothic cathedral and, uh, you know, so the American church, uh, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, um, the fate on architectural book. So just dealing with the architecture that this is, you know, interesting. It was purposely designed in a specific way to have the most dramatic effect, the United States, the Washington United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Um, and I think they had a famous architect design it. The name is slipping me. Another cool book, Detroit, The Dream is Now, um, that has some buildings. It's not really, uh, I, I have it here with my architecture, but it has a, uh, um, you know, the design art and resurgence of an American city that includes all, you know, all types of things, including some uh, buildings. But, you know, do it's here in Detroit. Um, Albert Kahn in Detroit, Building the Modern World by Michael Hodges. And you see I got this one autographed. Uh, Michael Hodges, a local Detroiter. I got this book when it came out. You know, Albert Kahn, uh, Henry Ford's architect, uh, and all sorts of buildings I showed streaming like a month, a few months ago. I went with my mom to uh, the Albert Kahn exhibit. And, uh, you know, so this is a great book. Uh, Michael Hodges props. Uh... Here's a pretty cool book. This was a, you know, course book, course notes for civil engineering, 431 construction contracting. Um, you know, when I was in University of Michigan, uh, professor, I has the wrong professor on it. It was a female professor. Here, another important uh, German, uh, largely Jewish before the war in Israel. There's also a lot of Buhas. Buhas was a specific uh, architectural, artistic style that uh, um, was very popular in Germany before the war. A lot of Tel Aviv um, of, of, uh, is also designed in a Buha style. So anyone knows architecture is uh, probably familiar with this. Uh, you know, due to the changing technology, Buha 
could be uh, you know, like Albert Kahn and the way that factory or buildings that uh, technology has changed. So the Buha style, could, you could be affected by it. Um, another important book, if you're into the, uh, estimating and building construction, uh, you know, as the science of cost estimating, very important, specifically related to various construction. I think this is also a famous, uh, semi-famous book. This is pretty cool. Uh, the City Shaped Urban Patterns and Meanings Through History. We're just talking about uh, how cities are laid out and uh, designed and developed, covering the gamut of rural history. Pretty cool book. Spiro Kostov was a professor of architecture at UC Berkeley, also at MIT. Here's another cool book, especially Michigan. Um, Mike Smith, Designing Detroit, um, talking about Roland and the rise of modern American architecture. So Roland... Um, was the same time as Albert Kahn, Albert Kahn and designed a lot of the famous buildings and had a certain style and an effect. And, you know, building construction has changed. A lot of his buildings are still around in Detroit. So uh, anyone who wanted to know about Detroit, pretty good book on uh, Roland. This was also a University of Michigan textbook, Professional Real Estate Development, the ULI Guide to uh, the Business, talking about... Uh, you know, the financial uh, aspects to real estate development, not covering uh, the actual building of it, but uh, more the financial aspects. And, you know, assuming that most of uh, the building would be outsourced. This is a pretty cool book also, The Home Plan Doctor, The Essential Companion for anyone buying a home design plan, trying to, you know, uh, build your own house or just understand the various layouts that houses might have. So, you know, once you understand architectural drawings, um, you think about things in a different way. And when you walk into buildings, uh, commercial buildings, you know, doctor's offices, stores, uh, houses, your friends' houses, your neighbors, uh, you, you know, you think about them in terms of layout and design and then, you know, even in terms of like houses, there's from a handful of type houses. It, so it was a pretty good book just to understand. Um, home by Design, Transforming Your House into a Home. Also, you know, about home design or home construction. Fixing your house up to make it more towards your liking. Another cool book, uh, Patterns of Home, the 10 Essential uh, of Enduring Design. And, uh, you know, so looking at really just a handful of home types that uh, in their advantages and disadvantages for the type living. Um, this is a pretty cool, this is a German company, the, the DEGW, Design for Change, the, uh, the User Typologies of light and air and regeneration, which is like the, you know, more modern style of uh, large open workspaces from a major architectural firm, um, DEGW, talking about their work. Here's the DeWalt Construction Estimating Handbook. I think DeWalt makes uh, um, power equipment. So, uh, you know, let's talk about... Um, Another, you know, handbook on cost estimating. Black and Decker, The Complete Guide to Home Wiring. Pretty cool book. Nice pictures. Uh, you know, if you're talking about the components of a building. So electricity, wiring a house. Um, you know, good stuff uh, made by Black and Decker. Uh, you know, as a construction supplier of electronic uh, equipment. Here's running a successful construction company. Duvet had thought about becoming a contractor. His work with contractors never came up with that. So, uh, you know, just uh, the basics of the management financial end for running a construction company. A pretty decent book. Um, remodeling a basement. Um, a pretty cool book. 
you're just understanding what it takes to remodel the basement. My basement here in this house is not finished. Um, you know, there's too much flooding. It would probably be a bad idea to try to finish a basement, but in some areas um, where the likelihood of flooding or, or depending on the flooding, but how to go about remodeling a basement if it's you know not finished in the various aspect. You know, these Home Depot uh, Improvement 123, sponsored by Home Depot and covers uh, you know, various aspects of home improvement step-by-step. Uh, -step. Pretty cool book for you know, a Home Depot book. Here's another Black & Decker book, The Complete Guide to Plumbing. Really great pictures, step-by-step -step to uh, all sorts of plumbing, including from home building to fixing basic plumbing. These books are pretty cool. You know, uh, you could probably pick one up and do basic uh, um, construction. Yes, yeah, Sonia, thanks for joining in. Um, well, yeah, I mean, Buhas and the Corbus the uh, Corbusier are uh, Corbusier are important for the history of architecture. Some of their ideas still exist in mar modern architecture, but anyone in the field would know about them and their effect on history. You know, third person, uh, you know, I'll talk about that later, but uh, um, let me finish uh, these books. These are good series, these building illustrated. So here's building construction il illustrated from, you know, home building. And it has, you know, very nice uh, illustrations of all the various aspects of uh, home building. So, uh, you know, when I was in school, I bought these books on my own and they, you know, helped, uh, elucidate the points and if you get involved in construction um here's building codes you know god forbid 2009 building code you know like when i was in school i uh, uh bought this and uh you're just graphical representations to help you understand the building code when i was in new york city the building code was thousands of pages and um the Zoning code was thousands of pages, and New York was, you know, you had to, uh, you know, make like point by point, and, and you had to pay large sums of money uh, to the planners that checked that you were in line with the building code, and if you weren't, they point by point told you what you had to fix, it cost a fortune, you know, like uh, like to build a building, you had to pay, uh, you, you know, the, the planning uh, committee like tens of thousands of dollars, and you go back and forth with their mistakes, and, uh, you know, if you're really an engineer you had to be expert in the building code they have like a um standards of international or u.s uh building codes um but uh and uh, you know the local building codes but you know it's important to understand the building code could really uh, hold up uh, some of your uh construction so uh let's uh up here on uh I'll do the top shelf here first. So some of these are semi, you know, popular, well-known books. So here's another one, uh, Albert Kahn, Architect of Ford, you know, Albert Kahn of, in Detroit. So this is focusing more on the work that Albert Kahn did for Henry Ford. And, uh, you know, so pretty interesting uh the invention of brownstone brooklyn anyone brooklyn you know knowing uh uh you know the the brownstones all over the place so uh you know nice history um here's uh the the the, the, the corbusier um towards a new architecture translation of his famous book so uh, you know this is the famous book by, by the corbusier towards a new architecture um and here's another collection of the corbusier talks with students so that's his own uh, books. Here's another one, Eco Faith, uh, Creating and Sustaining Green Congregations, about uh, building for congregations in an um, environmentally friendly way. Uh, you say to brick the life of Lewis Kahn. So I had a picture book, you know, another one. So this is a uh, you know, biography, Lewis Kahn, international famous. Uh, you know, he was in uh, Pakistan, he designed buildings in Yale. I think the Yale Library at uh, um, that famous uh, uh, private school, um, the the name slipping me, uh, that where Mark Zuckerberg went, uh, but you know, very very famous architect. 
Um, I think this was a University of Michigan Place Matters, Metropolitics for the 21st Century. So this is a, it was been a popular textbook in universities, Place Matters. Um, you're talking about the connection between urban planning and politics. Um, this is a cool book, The Plan of Chicago, Daniel Burnham and the Remaking of the American City. Anyone who knows anything about Chicago, you'll know, probably you know has heard of Daniel Burnham and uh, you know the 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 famous plan for uh, Chicago and uh, you know like the, the waterway and the sewage and various things that a lot of it's still till today one of the the first major city plans anywhere um, the Green Revolution um, another book on you know the new environmental like you know all the lead certification Here's a cool book, Mega Projects, The Changing Politics of Urban Public Investment. So this is an important book about how um, modern projects are financed with public-private partnerships. So uh, you know, mega projects that might have uh, private investors or urban investors and the politics of uh, how these uh, mega projects uh, get done. Um, you know, pretty important book. Um, another one, Labor in the New Urban Battlegrounds, Local Solidarity. Um, you know, the connection between labor and urban planning and urban design, important issue. Uh, a fade in book just on concrete, all the uses and types of concrete and history of concrete. Um, just, uh, well, these were interesting books. Philistines at the Hedge Grow um, by Stephen Gaines which is, uh, I think this one is about um, the Hamptons and the history of real estate and the ultra wealthy building mega mansions in the Hamptons. And then he has another one, uh, The Sky is the Limit, about the Upper East Side and, uh, and very expensive condominiums in uh, New York City by Stephen Gaines. So interesting books there, uh, another... Tishken book, I have a whole bunch of these. Um, architectural theory from Renaissance to um, present. So important books on uh, architectural theory. Uh, here's a you know cool book, uh, the, the Architectural In uh, Institute of America, New Jersey guidebook, 150 best uh, building and places. I have a whole bunch of these AIA books. I have them somewhere else also in in, uh, in my house that are um, somewhere else. Fade on Atlas of Contemporary Wor World Architecture, Travel Edition. I bought like all the Fade on books that like I once went through on Amazon and just like bought as many Fade on books, especially the cheaper ones that uh, that were that I found. Um, these cool book, 500 Buildings of London. Um, Seeking New York, stories behind historical architecture of Manhattan, one building at a time. You know, interesting just to select stories of uh, historical buildings in New York. Um, Triumph of the City, how our greatest invention makes us richer, smarter, greener, and happier. Uh, you know, important books about the city. Here's the architectural AIA guide to Detroit and the buildings in Detroit. Um, here's another 500 buildings of Paris. Then I got 500 buildings of uh, New York. Here's a bunch of fade in books, destination architecture, a thousand contemporary buildings. Um, here's how to read churches, a crash course in ecclesiastical architecture. Also Rizzoli. I um, have to ask Jim Rizzoli if he's uh, related to, uh, you know, the, the Rizzoli construction, another Rizzoli book, how to read New York. A crash course in Big Apple architecture, important uh, uh, book. Another fade on book, the house book, just a pocket guide to house types. Um, this is a very famous book. Like anybody who knows anything about urban planning, probably knows. You know Jane Jacobs, the death and life of great American cities. Uh, you know, like uh, required reading uh, text uh, of. American urban planning about, you know, kind of a critique on uh, 
um, Suburbia. This is a really cool book. Uh, a pattern language, towns, building, and construction. And it you know, just talks about the patterns of urban design. And from like a geometric perspective, um, highly recommended for anyone who wants a you know more in-depth understanding of your know, mathematical approach towards uh, patterns, a pattern language, towns, building, and construction. Another fade on modern architecture A to Z. Um, Work in the city, another interesting book, uh, you know, the relation between work and city design. Um, Lewis Mumford, so this is a very famous book. I think Mumford was in Jerusalem at uh, one of these gatherings, but, you know, very famous uh, uh, architect, urban planner. So his book, The City in History, very, uh, you know, exhaustive uh, uh Role, you know, view of what is the city and how that's changed in history, American architecture, um, another you know good book overview, um, pushing the limits, uh, new adventures in engineering, about some of the you know modern mark mega structures and the changing in engineering technology, uh, the great inversion in the future of the American city. Uh, a lot of these books focus on kind of like the death of suburbia and the return to the city. Uh, it's a theme in, in American uh, urban planning, sustainability in the civil commons, rural communities in the age of globalization. Also about the decline of suburbia, the decline of uh, rural areas and uh, you know what's happening or if there's any hope for rural areas uh, in modern day from the civil engineering. Well, there's been interesting books, uh, Socially Sustainable Cities. Here's a few more Tushken books, uh, China style, Tuscan style, Berlin style. A whole bunch of these books that are all pretty interesting. Um, so last shelf. This book actually I took uh, Peter David, a popular course at uh, University of Michigan in real estate uh, uh, basics. And he just used this book on uh, real estate, investing in real estate. <laughs> that cover the, the, you know, the basics of the financing of purchasing real estate construction, all the various aspects of it. Um, this one was kind of expensive. This was a really interesting book also uh, about modern sports facilities, major league winners using sports and cultural centers as tools for economic development, talking about uh, you know, the trend of uh, building new stadiums in urban areas and uh, the economic effects that that has had. Um, here's a whole bunch more Tushken books. You know, they all have uh, good pictures. These are famous architects. So Gaudi, Eames, Le Corbusier, Frank Lloyd Wright, and uh, Calatrava, Italian architect. All the interesting, uh, you know, pictures and overview of famous architects' work. The complete buildings of Pladio, I think another famous uh, Italian architect. Here's another Tushken book, Indian Interior. So I had other books about uh, Indian buildings, but this just focused on the interior, Indian style. Um, here's another good overview of the great builders. Just a history of some of the you know the great uh, builders who built uh, uh, different things throughout history. These are textbooks. So here's construction planning equipment and methods, and this focuses on you know the rental and use of construction equipment uh, like you know like cranes, bulldozers, various things to if you're doing a construction planning and want to plan out when, how long, and you know the cost estimating and planning of uh, using construction equipment. Construction contracting. This was University of Michigan textbook. Um, I, I showed the course notes. Practical guide to company management. Um, you know, nice overview. This is a really good book. Um, this actually, Professor Everett, University of Michigan, my professor Everett, 
So I had ordered online the book. It wasn't required for the course. It was a Robert Harris was a retired University of Michigan professor, and he wrote a book on scheduling. And I had bought online a copy, and it was autographed. So uh, the the professor who was uh, Korean wanted uh, wanted my autographed copy. So he exchanged for me, I guess, uh, his copy, or it was uh, another professor. And this is you know the scheduling method of uh, your various uh, um, you know, the names are slipping me now for uh, the you know the various methods for scheduling and uh, precedent and arrow networking techniques for construction. So uh, you know very important. This is Duvid's uh, professional training uh, is uh, cost estimation and scheduling. So great book, University of Michigan professor. Uh, Robert Harris. This is another university textbook, Urban Geography, and it looks at the cities on a larger level, the connection between geography and uh, the purpose of cities or the different cities and urban layout. Pretty good book. Um, another Tishken book on uh, Green architecture. See some other books. Skyscraper Dreams: The Great Real Estate Dynasties of New York. Interesting books on uh, you know just the the wealthy families that dominate uh, New York uh, real estate. Another interesting textbook: Urban Design Collection of Essays. Um, so decent book. Getting a job in architecture and design is actually very tough these days. Here, I think there's another textbook, uh, McGraw-Hill Facility Design and Management Handbook. So, you know, specifically for facility design and management. Here's a book, uh, my, I think it's also designed as a university, or do-it-yourself home building, do-it-yourself guide, all the processes to home building. This was a really interesting book also, The Social Construction of Ancient Cities, uh, you know, overview just of how ancient cities were built and uh, you know their layout and purpose and ver various aspects of the grammar of architecture important book like a to z of uh you know various uh, architectural concepts um i think this was also a university uni university of michigan class i took in environmental engineering um which I, I have here together with my civil engineering books uh but this is more straight environmental engineering um you know pollution and uh um, water, you know, various things. Um, another course, I think this is from my U University of Michigan course I took in environmental engineering. Um, Placemakers, A Brief History of Real Estate Development. So this is also a pretty cool book on a uh, you know, long overview of real estate development, you know, looking uh, at the long historical arc. Uh, Between Silence and Light. Spirit and Architecture of Lewis Kahn. So another Lewis Kahn book. I have multiple uh, books of Lewis Kahn in his architecture. Here, uh, a new architectural generation, um, uh, overview of some of the modern architects uh, you know, who on the scene is doing modern architecture. And here's the Frank Lloyd Wright lectures. So these are actual lectures on architecture that uh, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, gave. So that is Duvid's um, civil engineering books. So I wasn't really monitoring, looking at the chat. So, you know, wrap up. I'll give a few comments. And the, the next ones I do are going to be more in detail of you know, possibly recommendations or topic where, where I have smaller sections. So I have Judaica where I have, you know, well over a thousand books and I'll probably do that at a future time. And, you know, be a long stream might even be hours where I cover my uh, Judaica books. But uh, um, I'm, I'm partially also doing this for myself that, uh, um, yeah, Paul, no, most of these books aren't for sale. Like, I sell books. You could check my eBay. Um, yeah, I'll put my eBay link in the chat. 
that uh, you know, if you wanted to see the books, but uh, you know, most of these books I don't have for sale and I don't plan on putting them up for sale. These are, you know, my private collection that I plan on keeping. And so you could see my eBay, the books that I have for sale. So you know, most of these books you could probably get. So if you find any of these books interesting, you could uh, you look them up on your own and uh, probably find them and uh, you'll get them at uh, retail price on uh, your know, various internet uh, servers. Um, so not much going on in the chat. You know, just a handful of people watching. So we'll see if people tune in. I wasn't sure this would be that interesting. I did this kind of more for myself and just to show you know, people that follow me that this is my professional training. This is uh, you know what I went to school for. This is what I've worked uh, professionally in. And it shapes my commentary. Like I was mentioning to John, we're doing mob talk. And if you're there, John, I just got the Whitney Webb new books on God forbid Jeffrey Epstein. So when we do mob talk. There's a lot of information about their, you know, God forbid, talk, like Jewish mafia, um, you know, the new Whitney Webb books. Uh, but, uh, you know, even talking like mafia, uh, the culture wars, various things. Like I don't have uh, E. Michael Jones, like The Decline of American Cities, or I forget the title of that book. But uh, it gives a lot of insight to understand urban design. So let alone like construction and to a large as a large perspective, urban design doesn't help you with a career. Like you could possibly get a job with like the city. Most people who get like degrees in urban planning, urban design, either go on to work for the city or go on to work for developers. And in university, they're very anti-developer, even though most universities are funded by developers like University of Michigan, the Taubman School of Urban Planning, and you know, the Zell uh, uh, um, School of uh, Stephen Ross and Zell and, and Davidson. But you know, Zell's a huge real estate developer, and uh, Stephen Ross is one of the wealthiest real estate developers in the country. Uh, and, and you know, Alfred Taubman, a, a blessed memory, you know, billionaire. Um, who uh, you, you uh, did uh, strip malls and uh, different type of development across the country usually fund the schools, but the professors are usually very kind of like anti-capitalistic and they favor European style central planning, which doesn't exist. Uh, so you get the university education and it doesn't necessarily help you with employment unless you're specifically looking to work for uh, developers. And they say like a yeshiva education might help you just as much with like being a landlord. So, you know, in terms of construction, even like management, um, like going into a union or you know, like I showed you these books on you know, like Black and Decker, how to build a house, Home Depot, you really, you, I mean, you learn a lot from reading books and you should read books, but it's more the type thing that you learn from doing and from mentorship. Although, you know, I would assume that most contractors that do that type thing have, you know, read a few type books like that. But, uh, you know, you can't really read a book and then do it. I mean, some of the home improvement you might be able to. Uh, so cost estimating my field, you know, more you want to feel for how much things should cost, how to schedule it, how to construction management to, uh, you know, the financing to uh, sell a construction project to estimate how much it's going to cost and schedule how long it should take. Uh, subcontracting. There's the legal aspects of uh, submitting all the paperwork, the financing, the mortgages. You know, so within the Hasidic community, like real estate development's the pinnacle of all professions. Um, you know, so not just like being a landlord, um, but putting up new buildings. So like most landlords don't put up new buildings, and uh, you know, like Jared Kushner, um, Hatchet Joe, Jared Kushner's grandfather, Hatchet Joe Kushner who started as a home builder and even used to sleep in the houses where he was building and they called him Hatchet Joe. Um, but, uh, you know, built thousands of homes. And then uh, Jared Kushner's father, Charles Kushner, pivoted from um, homes 
to apartment buildings, to Jared Kushner, you know, um, the 666 uh, Manhattan buying, uh, you know, uh, very large buildings, huge developments. Um, but even the, you know, Kushner is not really building that much. So, I mean, the pinnacle is building new buildings. And that requires like, you know, the use of all the wisdom, financing, zoning, um, getting a, approval, making uh, making business plans. Uh, you, you might have to have public meetings and, and uh, public private partnerships. I showed that book that was really cool on major league winners talking about stadium um, you know, facilities. Um, I go to a lot of engineering conferences and like I talk, uh, you know, do like facilities management construction management design so for if you have engineering facilities or you want to build a new um, construction facilities like uh, you know like uh, like Albert Kahn was Henry Ford's architect and built hundreds of buildings for Ford Motor Company and so you have a type of architecture for industrial facilities and the various types of industrial facilities like robotics or what's going to go in it that might uh, change how the building's built um, you know, but most landlords are residential and commercial. Like here in Detroit, industrial is big and the companies themselves, uh, you know, because there's so much empty property, you could get used industrial buildings, but the bigger companies might build new and they'd have reasons for the industrial facility where it, it pays to build new, but it's very expensive. But the pinnacle, you know, real estate is development building new buildings but i say very few people even in real estate ever end up putting up uh new buildings um so that always been a dream of mine and even you know said was actually houses of worship to uh, you know build new houses of worship you think like synagogues uh very few synagogues have been built in america even like chabad houses aren't, aren't usually proper synagogues uh because of the decline of suburbia there's actually many empty synagogues and many synagogues are used for churches um but uh, and even churches are on the decline that you have you know i showed the books on hindu architecture in america so you know a semi uh, like even here in metro detroit of hindu temples that have been built um some mosques that have been built although a lot of the mosques that have been built have been conversions from other buildings into mosques because you know it's expensive uh, to build a new mosque. Uh, but, uh, you know, so it'd be interesting if there ever was a phenomenon where there'd be new synagogues being built in America, like in Israel, there's new synagogues constantly being, uh, you know, built. So you maybe I'll wrap up, you know, keep this semi short. I wanted to cover this somewhat for myself because, uh, I haven't really looked at these books for a few years, like the Hindu books, I studied Hinduism, took it very seriously. I was reading probably even like an hour a day uh, for five years on Hinduism. So civil engineering, architecture, urban planning. I may have been reading two hours a day for two or three years. And, and, uh, um, and then since COVID-19 or you know, various things, like I, I hardly ever look at these books. I occasionally get a new book or I have a whole bunch of other books that I bought years ago and haven't got to and read a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, this stuff, but, it, but it's more of the distant path, past, but uh, I spent, you know, thousands of hours studying this information. It affects how I view the world. Certainly knowledge of urban planning constructions, important, um, you know, finance being a landlord is the best path towards uh, wealth you know, owning as opposed to renting and, you know, very useful information. So, you know, it could be this will be less interesting than some of my future ones. Hopefully I'm planning doing this every Wednesday, but, uh, you know, I somewhat did this for myself just to remind myself of all the hard work that I put into studying this stuff, even though I had to use it, you know, God forbid. So, you know, nowadays, like consciousness for years, you know, especially since COVID-19, I probably put a thousand hours into the study of, you know, consciousness and psychology and tens of hours, you know, tops over the last few years into, uh, you know, this field. But, uh, you know, these are all books that I've read. Um, you know, the one I have the books that I haven't read are, are like, uh, in piles and other places. So, you know, you, most of the books on my shelf 
our books that I've read. So, uh, you know, I thought I'd share this, uh, you know, people who follow want to see the type influence and how I think and understand the world and, uh, you know, possibly the future where I will return to, in, you know, certainly I'm doing these engineering conferences. Next week, I'm going to be going to uh, a preservation at uh, Huntington Place in Detroit, a trade show on uh, home preservation, uh, you know, constantly going to these trade shows. And I would actually still like to get into facilities design and management. And, uh, you, you know, so to keep this information fresh in my head. And, you know, there was a period of time where it like, just interests me architecture. I have a whole bunch of books on architecture of different cities. So these are ones I actually read, but like, you yeah, have books on like San Francisco and Europe and uh, um, more on Chicago and, and various cities that uh, going over their architecture. And, and it's interesting, but you know, I, 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 you know, time is short and you can't do everything. So this was a phase of my life that, uh, you know, God forbid, is past and uh, you know, may return. So I guess with that, God bless. I'm going to uh, and, uh, you know, may sign off. And uh, you'll see you again. So take care. Blessings.